Our reading today comes from Acts 10, 34, 43, Psalm 118, verses 1 through 2 and 14 through 24, the letter of Paul to the Colossians 3, 1 through 4, and our gospel is taken from John 20, verses 1 through 18. Let us pray. May the risen Lord breathe on our minds and open our eyes that we may know him in the breaking of bread and follow him in his risen life. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Is it coincidence that the Sunday of resurrection and spring, the beginning of new life, all follow at the same time? It's almost as if our Creator, seeing that our belief, our faith, is beginning to wane, provides us with loving, growing proof of new life that comes forth from seeds that have been buried, giving their all to bring forth new life. From John 12, we read, Very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. The day of resurrection brings back to mind those very words that Jesus shared with his disciples. If you have ever planted a seed, then you know that in order for that seed to sprout, it must spend time below the ground in darkness. Once that seed sprouts and the new plant begins its growth, you can no longer find the seed. All you find are the roots that are the life-sustaining medium for that new growth that is seen. And so it was for Jesus. He was laid in the tomb and spent two days in darkness. On the third day, he rose from the dead. And those who went to the tomb could not find him there. Mark 15 reads, Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified, has been raised. He is not here. The women's looking for Jesus is like trying to find that seed again once the plant has begun to grow. The only thing we find when we're digging around the dirt for that seed are roots. The roots that give life and sustain life. And indeed, the only thing found that day in the tomb was the life-sustaining presence of Jesus' promise that he must die and rise again on the third day. We cannot find Jesus among the dead. Jesus is among the living, and we can find him in every face we see, in the face of those by whom we sit every Sunday, in the face of the one who has no church, in the face of our elderly, the face of our youngborn, our poor, our destitute, our hungry, our homeless, our dying, and in the face of those whom we love, and in the face of those whom we do not love. We have at one time or another met them all, and we will continue to meet them as we journey toward our celestial Galilee. Why Galilee? Did our Lord not tell the women to tell all that he would meet them in Galilee? Well, you see, in spite of our deserting Jesus, just like the first disciples, and in spite of our doubts and failure to acknowledge him in the faces of those whom we meet, our Lord continues to wait for us. He forgave the disciples, he forgives us, and he waits here in Galilee. Galilee is here, where we are now. This is where Jesus said he would meet us. This is why Jesus keeps journeying, for he so wants to be in the midst of our life. As San Portaro says, Jesus wants to be among the familiar and the faithful. Jesus wants to be in the midst of our life to help us through these dark moments. Since last Easter, and certainly right now at present time with this pandemic, some of us have suffered losses. We have suffered the loss of family and friends, jobs, health, opportunities. We have suffered separation and rejection. We have fallen into the valley of depression and fear. And through this, all of this, our Lord promises that there will be another Easter. Easter is here now, and Easter will come again. 
Our Lord waits for us to spend our momentary period in darkness. For how well he knows that all things that grow and bear fruit must go through a period of darkness. And like all things made new, we too cannot remain among the dead. We have been given new life in this risen Christ, and now he calls us by name and calls us into action. Jesus, our good shepherd, calls us by name just like he did Mary Magdalene. He recognized his sheep, and she recognized her master's voice. And Mary, like many of us, rejoining with a loved one, wants to hold on to him. But he had not yet ascended to the Father. The full cycle of resurrection had not been brought to its completion. We too hold on to when we should simply hold. Holding leaves the held one free to move. Holding on to tethers that held one and limits his or her mobility and growth. Mary was called by name and letting Jesus go, she was let go and sent. She was the first commissioned disciple to tell others, I have seen the Lord. She was the first to practice resurrection. Nora Gallagher talks about practicing resurrection. She wonders whether we spend too much time in church discussing whether we believe or we don't believe in the resurrection. And she thinks by doing this, we're missing the whole point. This is what she writes. When I think about the resurrection now, I not only wonder what happened to Jesus, I ponder what happened to the disciples. Something happened to them too. They went into hiding after the crucifixion, but after the resurrection appearances, they walked back into the world. They became braver and stronger. They visited strangers and healed the sick. It was not just what they saw when they saw Jesus or how they saw it, but what was set free in them. What if the resurrection is not about the appearance of Jesus alone, but what those appearances point us to and what they really mean? It's finally what we do with them that matters. We can either make them superstitions or we can make them stepping stones into a new life. Maybe resurrection, like everything else, needs to be practiced. We are all given the chance to practice resurrection, surviving the loss of a loved one, overcoming our addictions, overcoming our anxiety of losing a job or having to change jobs, learning to cope with our weakening health, overcoming our fears, learning how to love the unlovable. And above all, we are given the chance to tell others the good news using words if we absolutely have to. We have been called by our name, and we now have been commissioned, and we have work to do. For when our worship is over, our service begins. In the spirit of this new life, lift up your hearts. Alleluia, the Lord is risen. And let all of you at home reply, the Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia.